psychoanalysis and spirituality dash mahavidya dhumavati we come to the seventh mahavidya in the journey of 10 and the seventh mahavidya usually in sequence is Dhumavati. Dhumavati stands out among all the Mahavidyas in two ways. One, it is the only Mahavidya which does not have its corresponding Shiva. Second, it is also the only Mahavidya which is supposed to be practiced only by bachelors or sannyasis and not by those who live with families. Dhumavati is among the most difficult of Mahavidyas, practically speaking. In depiction, Kali or Chimmasta may appear to be more horrifying. In practice, Chinnamasta may be the most difficult to accomplish. But in practical life, in social life, to live out something difficult, the most difficult of Mahavidya, socially speaking, is Dhumavati. This Mahavidya is so difficult, socially speaking, that in many schools, many aspirants are asked not to do sadhana of this Mahavidya. Householders also are asked not to do sadhana of this Mahavidya. In terms of practical suffering, destitution, humiliation, loss, Dhumavati is among the most difficult of Mahavidyas. Because in Tantra and Agora, especially left hand Tantra and Agora, the belief is to develop to a state where you remain untouched as a pure witness awareness in bliss, untouched by the most pleasant and the most unpleasant. And when we talk of the most unpleasant, there are various shades of this unpleasant, just as there are various shades of the pleasant. One of the shades and the darkest of shades of the unpleasant is represented by Dhumavati. And the challenge is to love Dhumavati. Not to accept her as the ideal or to invite her when not necessary, but to enter a journey of self-development where one can remain unaffected by and even love Dhumavati. The most difficult to love among the Dash Mahavidyas. So much so that she is called the goddess of the inauspicious. So just as the idea is not to be affected by and start loving the crematorium or the graveyard. Similarly, to stop 
कि टू स्टॉप अवॉइडिंग स्टॉप फियरिंग एंड स्टार्ट लविंग द मोस्ट मिसफॉर्चून द मोस्ट अनफॉर्चुनेट ऑफ द अनफॉर्चुनेट रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय धुमावती द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ द गॉडेस ऑफ ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ मिसफॉर्चून एंड दैट बी वन ऑफ द गोल्स ऑफ द दस महाविद्या एंड लार्जली ऑफ कोर्स ऑफ लेफ्ट हैंड तंत्र दिस देवी although it is not compulsory for everyone to do her sadhana this is one of the most difficult devis to do sadhana of to come to a state where one is unaffected by it and to a state where one can love it despite all the suffering it brings and all the evil it represents because dhumavati is not only suffering it is also evil not all the evil but a substantial component of evil is in dhumavati especially that component of evil which arises in men out of suffering so let us know something more about it what is the story of origin and what is the depiction in iconography story of origin says parvati or shakti was very hungry and asked shiva to arrange for food shiva wanted to do some sadhana some tapasya and did not pay immediate attention to it parvati or shakti got furious and she ate her husband shiva shiva having been consumed opened his third eye the body of the devi started burning and shiva came out of it and the burnt body the burning body released the fumes and one of the mythological tales is the burnt body turned into bhairavi and the fumes turned into dhumavati and the second myth is that the whole body got burned into an old state and shiva came out of her and saw her burning reduced to the old state and fumes coming out of her and shiva told her that she has consumed her husband her shiva and therefore she will be worshiped only as a widow and she is the only mahavidya that does not have a corresponding shiva obviously the story is metaphorical shiva is the free witness observer overwhelmed consumed and swallowed by hungers of different type and when shiva has developed so much or rather the sadhak has developed so much that his shiva is able to come out in a sort of an auto cesarean auto inflammable operation burning to fumes the hungers of desire which overwhelm the shiva and reduce the hungers to a powerless person but the hungers are not here dead and this state can bring about the state of destitution and sadness in the life of the sadhak and this is the state of dubavati where the desires are no longer able to propel you powerfully into the world at the same time the witness is not powerful to annihilate the desires fully one reaches into a state where there are sticky desires of 
लो इंटेंसिटी बट ग्रेट स्टिकीनेस विदाउट द पावर ऑफ द रजस्ट टू सेटिस्फाई देम एंड इन सच अ स्टेट ऑफन डेस्टिट्यूशन एंड सैडनेस गेट्स इनवाइटेड धुमावती फेज कम्स इन सो दिस इज द मेटाफोरिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द स्टोरी व्हिच अकर्स इन द लाइफ ऑफ एनी डीप साधक दैट द स्टेट ऑफ धुमावती ऑलवेज कम्स we see this even in very well known cases take the story of aghori vimala randa and he had his own difficult time that he used to call sadhya sati the seven and half difficult years of his life which was the state of dhumavati that he was passing through where he had to borrow money uh, even to cremate his dead son so that is the stage of dhumavati and in every sadhak's life this stage long or short wide or narrow enduring or quick it does come this stage does come what is the depiction the depiction is of a old widow we are not talking of a rich old widow we are talking of a old widow suffering in poverty suffering out of age health all alone without any relatives or friends helpless sad deep into suffering into bitterness and envy because life has not given her anything but those around her Have good things of life. Somebody who feels abandoned by everybody, reduced to a subhuman status. That is the state of Dhumavati. Powerless, helpless, suffering, without any light at the end of the tunnel. It is like what Schopenhauer would say: endless pain to a painful end. that type of a situation another way of depicting her is by using the old phrase the madonna of suffering shri arbindo in her sadhana came across her shri madhar in her sadhana also came across her when they passed through that stage of dhumavati she is the devi of the inauspicious some people talk of encountering her in their dreams or in the astral world but more so more often people talk about seeing somebody around them in this state and there are many of them especially in developing and less developed countries they are the helplessness sadness suffering abandonment of old age is very real and very pervasive you can find millions of citizens passing through this stage of dhumavati for years almost till the end of their life and this is where the, the difference comes in that um, if the person is not spiritually active and developed the phase of suffering need not be the phase of dhubavati it can just be an ordinary suffering maybe a lifelong suffering but it is not dhubavati type of suffering it is a special type of spiritual suffering usually which comes in the middle of the sadhana and in thus mahavidya it is consciously invited in the middle of the sadhana and towards the end of it which the person comes out far more spiritually developed so every suffering is not essentially the state of dhumavati although it appears to be so the commonality is the suffering the helplessness the abandonment but where the difference is is this the suffering which comes as a part of the spiritual process is that dhumavati a suffering which comes otherwise maybe because of various reasons 
and the outcome difference is at the end of Dhrumavati, which comes out spiritually far more developed and enters into the stage of far more benign devis, often ending up with the most benign Tripura Sundari. The depiction tells us that she is the Devi of the inauspicious. She is often depicted in yellow color, wearing yellow colored clothes and riding on a chariot without any horse. A chariot which has to be almost like self-pulled by an old person and a chariot which moves very slowly. It is the chariot of the destitute. At times, she is not shown in the yellow color, but she is shown as a in white uh, sari of the widow with disheveled hair and very unkept, dirty attire. She is the Devi of the inauspicious, the goddess of the inauspicious. Also the goddess of Sade Sati, the 7.5 difficult years in one's time, which is believed in astrology to, have, to come in every person's life. She destroys everything good and pleasant in one's life. In a spiritual sense, therefore, she helps you be free from all that you are attached to. She brings bad luck a quick working of the karma, quick spiritual growth, and she makes you learn the hard way. If somebody is not adequately strong or not in the middle of a spiritual process, it can also lead to suicide. Otherwise, she it can be a very good preparation for Chin Namaste. And this is where I feel that the sequence can also be change for many people where the Dhumavati sadhana can follow Bhuvneshwari sadhana, followed by Chinnamasta and followed by Tripura Sutra. Dhumavati relates to the brute social experiences, practical experiences of everyday. We are no longer in the area of the surreal and the mystical. We are in the practical, concrete, everyday social existence. So we no longer have that surreal feeling of doing sadhana of a surreal form of tali or tara or chindamastha. Things are no longer surreal. They are very real, brute and on the sad part of the real. So there is a clear engagement with the world in two ways. In a more elemental form, the engagement with the practical world is through Bhuvaneshwari. But that engagement is a very wide engagement with physical existence. In a very social sense, a socio-economic sense, socio-psychological sense, the engagement with everyday concrete life is represented by the Bhavati. It's a sadhana only for bachelors and sannyasis because in the course of the sadhana you may lose the good things of life. You may be reduced to a state of destitution and you don't feel and you don't have to take your family members along with you. So better this sadhana is done only by bachelors or singles. In case of many sadhaks who have not even heard the name of Dhumavati and many of them don't even know they are in the middle of a spiritual sadhana, although they know they have a spiritual interest, but they consciously may not have started a systematic sadhana, but because of their journey of life and past karma, they are dragged through the sadhana. In such cases, Dhrumavati comes on her own even though the person is not doing Mahavidya Sadhana.
the bija mantra of dhumavati is dhum some use this bija mantra with only one expression of dhum and some use it six times after om so some use it as om dhum dhumavatyai namaha some use only dhum some use dhum six times some use om and dhum six times some use om dhum six times and namo namaha dhumavatyai namo namaha most common is the use of the bija dhum a phase of suffering is a part of everyone's life but it seems there are three forms of it the mild moderate and severe and only the severe form of it can be called suffering akin to dhumavati and only the severe form of suffering happening to a spiritual sadhak can really be called dhumavati suffering all suffering need not be dhumavati suffering but if you use the word roughly then just as in the psychological world of the individual the suffering the long suffering of dhumavati brings about revolutionary changes on the outer world of history long suffering in groups of people societies countries also brings about revolutions so there is like in a rough way dhumavati brings about the action of uh, bhuvaneshwari and it may lead to tripura sundari or it may lead to bhairavi but definitely better than before there is some bhuvaneshwari action within the mahavidya the opposite of dhumavati would be tripura sundari or some would say kamla but tripura sundari seems to be more comprehensive in splendor and prosperity more fundamental also shervindo was talks about he says how can one know sri krishna without knowing kali the same can be applied to the dashma vidya context how can one tri know tripura sundari or kamala without knowing dhumavati it destroys individuals prosperity attachment family life therefore only for singles we said that before and one of the sequences that can be practiced would be bhuvneshwari dhumavati chinnamasta followed by tripura sundari in a way bhuvneshwari would be a preparation for dhumavati and dhumavati would be a preparation for chinnamasta and chinnamasta would lead to the splendor and the freedom of tripura sundari in literature we find depiction of old women who almost represent the depiction of dhumavati munshi premchand in many of his novels makes uh, has characters of old widows who are ill treated by everyone and who live in great suffering and they represent in a way the dhumavati phase of life which is on in their lives those who are passing through this phase it is said we are told in literature their curse is very destructive and one should avoid curses coming from them and if they have come to do something to remove the effect of those curses
one more aspect that comes up here is if this is such a inauspicious and uh, suffering bringing devi can somebody practicing black magic not direct this devi to his enemy or his target and wreak havoc upon the target conceptually it seems feasible but it's there first i have not heard of any mahavidya being directed somewhere because they are too powerful to really listen to anybody number one number two uh, the power accumulated in the mahavidya can be misused but not the mahavidya itself is far beyond the capability of most and the consequences of misusing the powers accumulated in mahavidya also are so horrible that it would be very rare for somebody to either use powers accumulated in mahavidya sadhana for a black magic purpose or even to have that narcissistic desire to try to use the devi herself for a black magic purpose would be a invitation to disaster spirit aspect of dumavati is also described in literature we are told that when the dumavati stage is on often possessions happen by spirits which enjoy suffering very masochistic spirits or very sadistic spirits occasionally possession may also lead to a dhumavati like situation but as i said before all suffering is not dhumavati suffering dhumavati suffering is a special kind of suffering which is severe in intensity and happens in the middle of a spiritual process and that is why what comes out of dumavati spiritually develop everyone who comes out of destitution into prosperity does not come out spiritually develop in fact more many people come out worse than before there is also an important element about what to do when you see somebody passing through the stage of dumavati we are told in literature avoid curses coming from them there is great merit earned by helping them but don't confuse somebody who is in dhumavati stage with somebody who is suffering equally but not in dhumavati stage that may be because of other reasons and there it is like a quick sign you try to help and you get entangled or the possession from her partly may come to you or the envy of that person can destroy you may not be completely may not be forever but temporarily partially it can happen so when you see somebody suffering we have to be very clear about these things one not to get their curse second to decide very clearly whether we should help or not and only if we are clear it is dhumavati type of suffering does not involve any possession or it is not a quick send where you go to help and a karmic cord is created and takes you along with that person if the person comes with very heavy karma because of which the suffering is there or a very heavy possession or very heavy envy or self destruction then better not to try to help them 
not to annoy them and always keep a distance and no connect with them. But someone in the spiritual process passing through Dhubhavati, better to help if we can, if necessary, by using the shield to protect ourselves. And never to go to the same person over and over again. Psychoanalysis, how would it look at this sadhana and elementals and issues and phenomena which we encounter in the practice of this sadhana? The central emotion here is of sadness, suffering, helplessness, abandonment, powerlessness, frustration, bitterness. So out of it, one of the things that grows is a very destructive enemy. So this sadhana, this stage of sadhana brings up very destructive envy in its most destructive element form up to the surface. This envy spoils everything, pathological envy. It defiles the innocent and gets pleasure in that spoiling and the defiling of that innocent. It loves to create new victims so that they suffer like the person himself suffers. The person in this stage loves to create something inauspicious, something destructive, something that leads to anger, irritation. And anything good or pure brings about anger and irritation. His anger and goodness, even as there is a very deep-seated desire for goodness. There is an anger and revenge at the world. There is greed, partly born out of deprivation and partly the real greed, hidden, unconscious coming in. Sadism and mesochism at full play. Sadism at others. Occasionally mesochism on oneself, where one does not really want to get out of it in a secret way. And this is also an important element of the Dhubhavati Sadhana, that a part of the person also um, does not want to get out of it. It's a part, it's a pervasive lived experience and it's a part of life. Some who enter this phase may not be able to get out completely. Some decide not to. There are certain schools of uh, spirituality where there is a voluntary adoption of suffering. And you find that in Christian mysticism, in Sufi mysticism, and of course in India, we have a supermarket of spiritual schools. So you find many schools that embrace poverty and suffering. In a way, they live a lifelong Dhubhavati experience and they really master the Dhubhavati experience.
Dumavati also leads to cheating, to celebration of calamity brought over others, punishment brought over others. And one can go into false reality acceptance of Dhumavati, not anticipating eagerly for Tripura Sundari to come. That also can be a strategy of Dhumavati, of making the person go into false reality acceptance, give up the enthusiastic waiting for Tripura Sundari. Dhumavati gets into cunning, destruction, celebrating in the misfortune of others. Even as all these negative elements are at full play, secretly there is a desire to live and live well. And often, what stabilizes just above the unbearable crisis level, and this what I call is the tragic holding state. A tragic state, but one feels secure that one has survived in this state for a long, and therefore it's a familiar and from a survival standpoint, a secure state. And this is this holding state is actually a tragic holding state. And one of the worst tragedies that can happen to a person is for a person to fall for this tragic holding state and be there for a long time. The love of poverty we see is if it comes towards the beginning of the suffering, this is something different. Then this is not Dhumavati experience. But if it comes after a prolonged Dhumavati experience towards the end of it, then it's a successful journey through the Dhumavati experience. But this has to be accompanied by uh, spiritual developments in many other parts of the being. Only this is not enough. There are many spiritual schools where love of poverty can be lifelong, but the development to be the development to happen in the Dumavati experience just never happens in those spiritual schools. It remains more like a uh, like a routine, like a a canon written in the scripture. There's a long slide here. Going to be find more from a psychological standpoint during the stage of the Bhagavad We find depression, we find anxiety. We find object loss, we find humiliation, sadness, hatred, bitterness, misfortune, deprivation, living like a beggar and all the pathology associated with it, all the suffering associated with it. A secret will to live and often a secret masochistic happiness, a secret happiness in collusion with possessing spirits or a very deep secret happiness of the psychic because the spiritual journey is going on and the karmas are being burnt at a rapid rate. It's a high quantum karma repay stage. There is more often than not a will to get out of that frustration. Often this will can get covered up and one can resign, but more often than not, in case of sadhaks, there is a will to get out of frustration. And if the will is not there, then it takes a very destructive form. It can lead to death, to suicide, to 
complete shift over to the side of the evil. And this is a stage where help is needed from outside in the form of the guru or suprahuman beings or something. But the will has to be kept alive no matter how deep it is buried. At the heart of it is loving the most unlovable, being fearless in the face of the most fearful, and cultivating goodness at the very center of one's core, and undertaking transformation in the middle of greatest of suffering. And that is very true, very enduring fundamental transformation happening in the middle of the worst of suffering possible. And this goodness is also based upon a very concrete social truth. of selfishness and of unconcern at a very fundamental level. So this spiritual development, this development of goodness, this development of freedom from the very pleasant and the very unpleasant and this core development of empathy for the suffering this poor freedom from that which is pleasant in life and this poor experience of possibility of being in bliss without any object of pleasure, any relation of pleasure, equally any object of repulsion, any relation of repulsion. And that development of unconditional freedom, bliss, empathy, goodness, power, in the state of most acute helplessness, powerlessness, aloneness. It's a very deep and central transformation in human nature. 